All right, class. Um, we're looking at chapter four, and uh, what I got is I I got just one question for chapter four. It's chapter four, question six, I believe. So it's six four, uh, problem nineteen, the way it's listed in the textbook, uh, or in the uh, uh, my lab math, but it's question number six. So let's go for it here. So this is water quality survey. Let's go with it here. You test water hardness in, in a randomly s several randomly selected streams. Okay, that's cool. Uh, construct a confidence interval for the population for S squared. So, so this is variance. Not standard deviation, right? So just kind of be mindful of that. And the population standard deviation And so let's see what's the confidence interval for the population variance s squared. Okay, so I guess that's what we're going to do. Let's go with it. N is equal to 22. S is 12 grains per gallon. And um, I am not sure what they mean by water quality because normally what happens with water quality, it's um, parts per millionth of a milliliter. But anyways, let's go with it here. So first things first. <coughs> Uh, degrees of freedom. That's what we're going to look for. Degrees of freedom number is uh, the number of n minus 1. So we've got 21 here. So going on from there, uh, we have the formula that we need to use. So n minus 1 s squared over its uh, chi, the right side squared. And we're going to have, there's my variance right there. So that's the lower end. This is the higher end. And we have the left side of uh, chi squared. So that's the formula that we want um, eventually here. So uh, n is already given. That's easy. That's going to be 22. S is given. That's 12. That's great. So the only really thing that we need to figure out is the, the chi on the right side, the chi on the left side being squared. So that's going to be a table in your textbook as well. So let's go for it here. So how do we do this here? By f well, let me do it by formula. Then I'll give it to you by a, by a graph. How about that? That'll be kind of easier to see both ways here. So <clears throat> according to the formula itself, here it is. It's n minus c over two. And so we look at the one. Uh, our confidence is a 95% confidence scale, so it's going to be 0.95. So there it is, 1 minus 0.95 divided by 2. And if you do that, it gets you a 0 0.025. OK. The left side of it is going to be plus. So 1 plus c over 2. So 1 plus 0 0.95 divided by 2 gets me this one right here. OK, so we got lots of numbers here. The question is, what in the world does they, do they mean, first of all? So. Let's go for it. Let me give you just the visual illustration of it here. So remember the normal distribution curve or the chi distribution. And so that one's going to be our middle point. That's 50% of the data right here. And it comes down. All right. So what we want, if you kind of think about it here, this little box represents maybe let's say 95%. So notice if this was all 100%, um, that means we would have 5% left, but 5% has to be distributed to the left side as well as to the right side. So when you do the distribution, pretty much you get 2.5% on the left, 2.5% on the right. Change it to a decimal. So 2.5% change into decimal 0 0.025. Now the tricky part is this side. Because remember, um, our chi chart always goes from 0 and it kind of keeps on spreading out this way. So technically, if we get to this point here, it's going to be the 95 plus the the 2.5. So if we do that here, so it's this 2.5 plus the 95 added together gets you 97.5. That's where that piece is. That's where that ends. So let's see if I can kind of draw it out here. So there's that piece there. Stops at 2.5. There's this piece here, including this one, and this one gets you to 97.5. All right, as a decimal, I got myself a 0 0.975. That's what I have there. All right, so I'm going to go to my chart. This is in your textbook. You can find it on the internet as well, but this is the chart that comes with the textbook here. So what I'm trying to find, degrees of freedom is 91. 
So my left hand side is if I'm looking over here, there it is. There's 10.283. So that takes care of one side. And I go over here and I get me the other side right here. That's 35.497. Those are the two markers that I need for my denominator. It's my alpha. So then we go from there. So here's what it looks like on a calculator when you punch it in. And here's the way you look like it when you actually do the work here. So 21 because n minus 1 from the first slide we looked at. It's 12 squared divided by the number that we got from the chart. There's my variance. And again, same thing. It's going to be 21 and then 12 squared over what we get for the other side. And if you punch it into the calculator, that's what you get. So eventually get an 85.2335. The other side we get 294. All right, and sorry, a little bit too fast there. So there it is. Got what I needed out of it here. So then we go from there, punch in that value there. And just to make sure that you know that I know the stuff and the fact that I got it right, there's my little uh, nice work rectangle, which I'm sure you guys get a lot of the time as well. All right, so there it is. Hopefully that was quick and hopefully that made sense. All right, wish you well in the rest of chapter six as well as seven, eight, and nine.